Hey everyone, this is David Watson from Plain Truth, a Holy Spirited podcast. And I'm here today with another of our Plain Truth shorts, this time on Scripture as a means of grace. When Wesley spoke about the means of grace, he meant the ordinary channels whereby God might convey to men and women preventing, justifying, or sanctifying grace. Along with reading Scripture, Wesley believed that prayer, the Lord's Supper, fasting, and Christian conferencing were means of grace. By Christian conferencing, Wesley didn't mean the kinds of business meetings that we have at our annual, jurisdictional, or general conferences. Rather, he meant class or band meetings where people would gather to grow in the faith through prayer, support, accountability, and the confession of sin. Scripture for Wesley wasn't just an informational resource. It was a transformational resource. In his Sermon on the Means of Grace, Wesley leans heavily on 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 when talking about the way in which Scripture mediates God's grace to us. He writes, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Consequently, all Scripture is infallibly true and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, to the end that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto all good works. In other words, the inspiration of Scripture means that it is trustworthy for leading us into the life of faith. From Scripture, we can come to understand doctrine, We can reprove and correct one another. Scripture will lead us to do the kinds of good works that should characterize the Christian life. This teaching can lead us to accept what God has done for us and respond to God's invitation to salvation. In other words, the teaching of Scripture can be a means by which we accept God's invitational preventing grace. Scripture can lead us to make a decision to follow Jesus, and thereby it functions as a means of justifying grace. Scripture can also mediate to us God's teaching about the Christian moral life, and thereby it can be a means of sanctifying grace. What's most important in all of this is that the Holy Spirit is at work in us when we read Scripture. Just reading Scripture without the guiding, transformative work of the Holy Spirit, won't be sufficient. After all, you can read the scriptures and still be an atheist. The devil quotes from scripture in the temptation narratives of Matthew and Luke. Reading scripture for the life of faith is an indispensable practice, but it will only really benefit us if God is working through our reading to form us into the image of Christ. Wesley wrote that all outward means, whatever, if separate from the Spirit of God, cannot profit at all, cannot conduce in any degree either to the knowledge or love of God. He goes on to write, It is he alone who, by his own almighty power, worketh in us what is pleasing in his sight. And all outward things, unless he work in them and by them, are mere weak and beggarly elements. In other words, just doing the right things, going through the motions, is insufficient for growth in faith and love of God and neighbor. In fact, Wesley says, religious practices apart from the presence of the Spirit of God are actually an offense to God. They are, he says, an abomination to God, a stink in God's nostrils. All of our practices should have a single goal in mind. They should, in Wesley's words, conduce to the knowledge and love of God. Wesley was likely reacting against some Anglican practices in his day. He saw people who would go through all the proper motions of the Christian life, and yet didn't seem at all to have been transformed by the sanctifying power of God. He was concerned over what he saw as the form of religion without the power. We can find plentiful examples of this in our own day, in a broad range of Christian traditions, including the traditions of Methodism. 
Everything for Wesley was about holiness of heart and life. Practices of the Christian life should lead to that end. The reading of Scripture, then, was specifically for the purpose of salvation. Put another way, Scripture for Wesley was a soteriological resource. You could learn the Scriptures inside out, but if God had not wrought holiness within you by your reading, then it was all for nothing. As Wesley once said, a person could be as orthodox as the devil and all the while be as great a stranger as he to the religion of the heart. Thanks for listening today. We hope you like the podcast. If you do, the best way to support us is by leaving a five-star review on your favorite podcast provider. You can also subscribe to the podcast, like our Facebook page, and follow us on Twitter, where our handle is at Holy Spirit Pod. Have a blessed week, and we'll be back with more podcast episodes soon.